Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Today it's definitely a whim, but I promised you on the live stream and you all were pretty interested in it that I was going to unbox some of my comics. I'm saying some because I have so many boxes, so we're going to start with one box, which is off camera. I cannot pick it up to bring it over here because it is too heavy. There's comics in it. <laughs> so what I'll do is I will zoom you guys in over there because that's what you want to see. You want to see the comics. Really exciting for me because I haven't seen a lot of these in over a year because they were in storage. So I hope you're interested in seeing some of the comics that I have. And if you like it, there are so many more. I'm Sasha, uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe for more comic book content. It's varied, we do all kinds of things. We do what we want. So this is the box, the top of the box. The first one we have in the box is Jessica Jones Pulse. There we go, focus on it. This one I have because it's a follow-up to Alias and I don't like it as much as Alias, but you know, I'm still glad that I have it. All right, so we're gonna shaky cam this because my tripod was angering me. So the next one that we have here is Exiles, which is actually, I think one of my favorite Marvel series. It's just a lot of fun. And it basically, it's this group of alternate reality X-Men mutants and the like who are torn from their home dimensions who then have to hop to other dimensions at first seemingly to fix them. And it's just, if you like alternate reality fare, it's really fun. Yeah, Exiles and Blink. Blink and comic book morph, not, you know, TV show morph, very different. Over here we have the Deadpools by Daniel Way. These were my first Deadpools that I ever read and it was what got me into Deadpool in the first place, which is kind of funny because this one, which is the first one, just hops in right after the Skrull invasion. So it's like, what's going on? I don't know, but it's fun. <laughs> See, I have the whole, the whole, there's more. There's more. This is a different Deadpool. This is a later Deadpool from the original sin yeah i'm right it's original sin it's okay <laughs> house of m the event where scarlet witch remade the world because she had a nervous breakdown yeah oop this is can you tell that i like deadpool this is classic deadpool from the first ever successful run this deadpool is quite different from this deadpool he's changed a lot over time this is where he got married Look, Cable's there. Cable's his best man. Focus on it. Focus on their love. There we go. Their love. In focus. Forget that. No, no, no. This. This is what matters. Deadpool, Deadpool, Deadpool. I own lots of Deadpool. So much Deadpool. Even more Deadpool. Ooh, is this a shark cover? It is. That's fun. He is fighting sharks. Look at that. Also, do you like how it's... Marvel now, Marvel now, back in 2016. Now, the future is then. So here we have Guardians of the Galaxy, which I did pick up after the movie. I'm not gonna lie. Wasn't super into them before that. And they are very different here than they were before or after. So it's a very different experience. It was okay. I didn't really stick with them too much. Not as much as Deadpool. <laughs> Even more Deadpool. So here we have the superior Spider-Man from the arc where Dr. Octavius had taken over Peter Parker's body and was just being Spider-Man. And I love this arc so much. Look at these covers. Oh, they're so good. Look at his spider costume. Superior Spider-Man. I have them all because I loved it. It was good. Superior Spider-Man. Radioactive. Ooh, Kingdom Come. What are you doing in here? <laughs> okay, so this is Kingdom Come, which is a famous Elseworld story about like an aged Superman having to come back in and take control of some out of control young heroes. And it's got art by Alex Ross, who does this hyper realistic style, as you can see from the cover. Actually, let me open it. Oh, look at it. Just look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. I love like, and look how like there's not even dialogue in some of these panels and you just get it all from the art. This is a beautiful comic. I love it. 
cannot recommend enough. Kingdom Come, randomly in here. <laughs> Over here, we have the Mighty Thor by Walter Simonson. Can I do it? Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I do it? I did. Oh, knowledge intact, achievement. This run is what got me into Thor. It's, I think, very, very fun. It's just Thor being Thor, I guess is the best way to describe it. Look at his stupid helmet. Forever, love forever. So I have a couple of these. I don't think I have all of them. Oh, is that a, there's a picture of me and my husband in there. Don't look at that. More Thor, this is Loki with Lorelei. Yeah, and then there's Thor like, oh no, I'm so defeated. Oh, I have more Thor than I thought. The God of Thunder. Okay, over here we have Wolverine by Jason Aaron, which I'll be honest, I didn't fully get into, and yet I have more than one. That's a thing that I do sometimes, where everybody's like, this runs great, love it. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard. The art's pretty though, the art's really pretty. I'm so buff, but still too tall, because I'm supposed to be a tiny Canadian. Ooh, the Uncanny X-Force. This one's dark. I like this one a lot. If you're into like dark co-op teams, co-op teams, wow. If, you know, secret ops and stuff like that. This one, this one's a lot of fun. The X-Force does the things that the X-Men can't slash shouldn't. There's Phantom X before he was Professor Xavier. That's a lot of fun. Look at Wolverine's stealth costume. Look at Psylocke's stealth costume. Look at Archangel on the cover. Just look at everything. Take it in. Woo. Yeah, the Uncanny X-Men. Second Coming, which was the Messiah story arc. I hope this is helpful for <laughs> newbies at all who are just like, what are these comics? Like, what is she talking about? So there were two more Uncanny X-Men in there. I just took them out. Again, this is an arc that I have but I'm not super attached to, but I'm glad that I have it. Like I will reread it and look at it, but it's just not one of my fave. I know some people are gonna be like, what's wrong with her? She has all these things, she doesn't love them, but yeah. You know, it's like when you have a collection, you have lots of stuff, like you don't feel equally about all of them, but I am really glad that I have these. They came from a point in my journey when I was just really trying to get into X-Men and just grabbing whatever I could to get in there. And so, good for them. Okay, down in this box. It's about to get real exciting. So this is one of the legacy comics, which is about Legion. And this is one of my absolute favorite series about David Haller. It's just dealing with all of his personalities and his struggle to gain control of his powers and his daddy issues with Charles Xavier. And it's just a fantastic comic series. It's only six volumes in trade, but it's 100% worth picking up. I love it. I also love Legion, the TV series. Just David Haller is a great character in general, and this is a great cover. Look at that. That's so cool. Oh, good. I have them together. Yeah. Oh, all the covers for this were so good. The paintbrush becoming his hair, but indicating that he has, like, Xavier powers. Like, that's good. Oh, and this one. That's one of my favorites. Oh, that's so good. I'm all back. <laughs> My neck, my back. So over here, we have Animal Man, Flesh and Blood. I have the Animal Man omnibus, but then I also have the Animal Man that came after Grant Morrison's run was done, when we were on to the next author. So I really enjoy Animal Man for reasons that I can't fully identify. Like, I don't know, just we're here for Animal Man. Manimal. Got some more Animal Man. Animal Man also has some really cool covers. Like, look at that. I love the transformation stuff where it just looks like bleh. I guess over here, it's just gonna become casually manga for a bit. Um, this is Acura, which is, I love Acura. I saw the um, anime movie first, but then of course I could tell that there was clearly more to the story. So I went and I picked up the manga and now I have that and I'm glad and it's really good and you should read it. And there's way more than him turning into a giant flesh monster at the end. Hack and Slap. One of the rare comics that is not mine. This is my husband's, so it's gonna go into the other pile. The pile of, he's got like three in here or something. A few are his, so, ooh, hack and slash. Oh, Judge Dredd, that's a me. I like Judge Dredd. You know that Judge Dredd actually ages concurrently? So he's been aging since he was published? How cool is that? I think it's cool. Other people are like, that sounds old. And it is. The British comic companies don't get enough love. When you say big two over there, you get a different reaction. Like you're talking about like AD and sci-fi and all those. And I really like those too. So Judge Dredd, oh, they're black and white, which 
Let me actually get a page. Like, I think it's very underrated. Like, people get used to the color and it's nice, but you don't really need it. It's just like manga. Like, you don't, you don't need it to be like that to tell a really evocative, cool story. So if you like Dread, basically you gotta like Dread's chin because all of the covers on the collected editions are just like, here are various shots of his chin. Why is this one dirty? What happened to you? Who did this? Why is there paint on you? So uh, over here, because I had to switch sides, I got friends on the other side. Just, it was getting difficult to reach that deep into the box. So we have Daredevil by Frank Miller. Uh, Frank Miller's writing style has changed over time. I enjoyed it at this period in time. I just, this is a really cool Daredevil run. For some, it's the iconic Daredevil run. I don't know if I'd go that far for me, but then again, like Daredevil, I'm not like, oh my God, I need to read all the Daredevil, but this is a really cool, this is a really cool arc and it gives you Electra too, so. Here's even more Deadpool. He can't stay in his lane. Stay on your side of the box. Oh yeah, okay. So I bought this for when I was gonna do a shippers video on the fact that Star-Lord and Kitty Pride were a thing. I just never got around to it. And these comics are, um, if you like these too, you'll like these comics. If not, then there's not a lot there for you. Let's put it like that. Here we have Thunderbolts, no quarter. Uh, not a lot to say about the Thunderbolts. They're another kind of, we do things that other people can't and we all have kind of slightly questionable allegiance teams. Over here we have Loki, Agents of Asgard, a comic that is 100% a byproduct of the love that was going on for Tom Hiddleston after Thor. And I was part of that train, and that's why I own this. I was a Loki fangirl, hardcore, loved him. So these are another couple of Star-Lord comics, like specifically Star-Lord, which I got because of the movie. And again, only got them, didn't stay on them, only have like these couple. This is an arc of Spider-Man called the Big Time Arc, and I have all of them. And full confession, I haven't finished reading them. Not because of any reason, just because, I don't know. I fell off them at the time, didn't get back for a while. It's, uh, I don't know. But I have them and I love the art and I do intend to finish them. I have more than one. Like I have volume four, three. I think two and one are in here somewhere. Part of what it is with me is that when I start collecting something, I wanna, hey look, it's Silver Sable. I wanna have the complete thing so that I can finish it. That way if it's like a cliffhanger or something, I don't get, you know, lost. So this is just one of the volumes of Batman No Man's Land, which was the arc where there was a horrible earthquake inside of Gotham. And so the city got divided up into different war zones essentially by the rogues. And Batman has to call all of his Bat family together to help him regain control of the city. And this is the arc that gives you Cassandra Kane. This is her first appearance. Look at her costume. It's so cool. I love this arc. I actually read it first as a novelization for some reason. I bought it from Scholastic when I was really young. And then when I saw it in the store, like they were re-releasing it at that point and I grabbed it and it's really good. I love Batman No Man's Land. Of course, the death of Jason Todd. You know I own this. Press X to Jason. Press X to Jason. Okay, these are Batman Eternal, and I I don't have anything to say about this. I don't have a lot to say about a lot of New 52 Batman. These exist, and I have them. That sounds so bad. This is Batman, The Long Halloween, which is a really cool comic, and it's also one of the first ones that I bought, actually, because Batman was where I kind of dived in to everything back in the day. And this is a really cool, oh, the art's really cool too. This is just a really cool standalone Batman story of him having to deal with these, these crimes, these holiday themed crimes and his rogues gallery. And it's really neat. Oh, ho, ho. Green Lantern, Green Arrow team up. So this is from the era where they put the two of them together because the idea was that Hal was boring and he needed somebody else to hang out with him. So Green Arrow, Ollie, also because they were both greens, so they felt that I wouldn't confuse readers. That was legit part of it. This is the arc where they go and have a bunch of like socially relevant political kind of adventures. Some of them have aged well, some of them have not. Oh dear, but I still enjoy it. Also, this was the arc that convinced me that they're not friends. People always fight me on that. And they're like, no, they are friends. Like, don't you have friends who like, call you up on stuff and I'm like yeah I have friends who call me up on stuff I don't have friends who like belittle absolutely everything I think believe 
and then make fun of my abusive backstory. I mean, I get what they were going for. It was very much like, oh, they have different opinions. And like, yeah, they do. And like, you can have different opinions than your friends. Like, that's absolutely fine. Like, it's real, it happens, but... Like, reading this, all I got was the impression that like, Ollie hated him. I've never been able to shake that, no matter how much more I've read, where they've had so many more friendly interactions, I'm always like, I remember. You can't make me forget this road trip of rage. Batman Beyond. I love Batman Beyond, the TV show. So when there were comics that continued on, I just grabbed them. I love Terry as Batman. I love how dark the DCAU got with the future it had for Bruce. Like, just really cool. Really cool stuff. Batman Beyond comics. They're, they're really cool. So these, I wish I had more of these. These are the comics that are based off the Batman animated series and they read exactly like extra adventures from that TV series, exactly like it. And the art's the same. Whenever I read them, I read them in the voices of that animated series. They are so fun. Look at this. It's like the show never ended. There's only a few volumes, well a few, there's like 12. There's only a few, but like I wish I had more of these. Here's another one. Oh, so fun. So this is Batman War Games, uh, book one. Ignore the cover, because the art inside looks nothing like that. Because this, this is the famed arc where Stephanie Brown dies and then it was so unpopular that they had to bring her back to life. Oh, the sixth gun. Uh, that is my husband's. Okay, this is an arc called Trinity, which I really liked, but it's kind of hard to explain at the same time. But I guess Cliff Notes version, the Trinity end up getting erased from existence and then it's just showing what happens to the world and how essential they are from like a mythological standpoint for the DC universe. So pretty cool. Of course, The Watchmen. Actually, my husband and I both have a copy of The Watchmen. I think we kept both of them. I absolutely adore The Watchmen. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. I'm not a Watchmen purist. Like I will watch and look at other stuff, but this I do believe stands alone. I look at the other stuff as like Elseworlds things. This comic is absolutely brilliant. And sometimes people try and tear it down. They're the same with the killing joke and stuff like that. And like. No work is absolutely perfect. Like you can find flaws in anything, but there is just so much to praise in The Watchmen. I genuinely think it's an amazing work like of art. I think this book is art. I love it. I reread The Watchmen whenever I can. It's just so amazing. Look at it. Oh yeah, there's, um, like, look at all that writing. Yeah, cause some, there's like books and like other things in here, excerpts of things that you're supposed to read as well really cool. Ah ha ha, this is important. Star Trek comics. I also collect Star Trek comics. I am a huge Trekkie. I don't like everything that's happened with Star Trek, but you don't have to. Like there's this thing as if like a fan recently that you have to enjoy every single thing and agree with every single decision. Also, I love that my camera's focusing on Julian. It knows what's up, but you don't. You don't, and that doesn't make you a bad fan or a bad person, just someone with a different opinion. Anyway, these comics, they really vary in quality. This one's really good. It's got a cool Bashir Garrick story in it, and I just love anything that expands the Star Trek universe. I also collect the novels. It really saddened me when I didn't, I couldn't attach to Discovery as much as the others. I still can't, like who knows, maybe years later, I'll have a different experience with it, but I, I couldn't attach to it. And then the way that it just kind of turned around was like, oh, if you don't like it, like you're racist, you're misogynist, you hate it for these reasons. And I was like, you know, I have very specific reasons why I don't like it. And none of them are what you're saying that they are. And then you're saying that I am X, Y, Z and that I have to be this type of fan, like with this sort of subject positioning to feel the way I do. And it was just very off-putting. And I was like, you know what? Like, it makes you not want to deal with it. Like, I was one of the fans who was like, oh, a Christopher Pike series would be fun. But I've wanted a Christopher Pike series since back in the day when I saw the pilot, like when I was watching the original series. And the turnaround be like, you only want this because you're white supremacist. And it's like, no, I want this because I think Christopher Pike's interesting. Trade? Firstly, a couple things. Okay, one minute. I don't know. Just the way that certain fandoms have been portrayed lately, firstly as monoliths, which isn't true because fandoms are not monolithic. There's a whole bunch of different types and subsets of everything inside of fandoms. So they say fans in general is kind of disingenuous. But anyway, the way they've been treated by like the media and people in upper tiers, like actors and stuff like that, I don't know. It hasn't, it hasn't sat very well with me 
for a while because I think there is a power differential there and a power dynamic. And when those people start, and one of the popular phrases right now, punching down, then what do you expect to happen to the fandom? Of course it explodes. And that's not to say there aren't bad fans out there, but to only focus on those fans and to focus all your energy on them and give them all of the attention and act like the minority that are there that are bad are worth all of your time and that you can tell everything about what people think by those few is really, it's quite awful. And I can see why some fans are just pulling away from things because who wants to be treated like that? Like who wants to be told all kinds of things and called names because you don't agree with something or you just don't like something. Even if you like everything else, you don't like this one thing and that makes you a terrible person. Like who wants to deal with that? Nobody wants that noise. I know it's much more complicated than all of that, but that's just my two quick cents as someone who is a part of a lot of fandoms that are currently exploding. <laughs> so yeah. And also this too, like no, sometimes people don't believe me on this, but the media coverage plays a huge part in it because sometimes narratives are repeated over and over again because a lot of places also take the same source or kind of paraphrase each other's articles. Like I know you know what I'm talking about. And then when you have stuff like that going on, it creates this narrative and then people who aren't involved fully will be like, oh, so this is the truth because why would anybody make this up? And then it's like a lot of times if you're actually in these fandoms, you know that that isn't the truth. And this is just a story being told to perpetuate like a certain viewpoint that a lot of times is there to make the fandom look bad so that decisions can be made vis-a-vis -vis shows or whatever that even if they aren't popular, you can just turn around and be like, oh, well, they're just bad people. And it's like, it's sad. I don't know. That whole thing I think is very sad. Like you don't have to agree with me. Like who can think that all those people are, no, they're completely right and fans suck and like they deserve everything they get and they just need to sit down and take whatever like creators throw at them. But I don't know. I think that there's more of a reciprocal relationship than that. Like fans shouldn't be able to demand absolutely everything they want. Of course not. But at the same time, there needs to be an acknowledgement that you have a, you have a franchise or a series or anything because there are people who watched it, because there are people who liked it. It's a relationship and any relationship, any relationship can become abusive or toxic if you don't nurture it. Yeah, anyway, back to my comic box. So I found a bunch more No Man's Lands. No Man's Lands, do you like, like they have like the caution tape on the sides, like caution, earthquake. These are some Justice League hard covers. I tend to enjoy Justice League, like whatever era they're in, I'll probably be collecting it. And now for something very, very special, near and dear to my heart, I have Astro City, oh my goodness. Astro City is one of my favorite comic book series of all time. If you haven't checked out my You're Sleeping on Astro City video, please do. Um, every single one of these focuses either on a bunch of different heroes, a different time period, just a different part of the history of Astro City. And I collect every single one. Like this is a series I will always collect. Oh, there's my Samaritan. Life in the big city. This one's great. Life in the big city is so good. This was from when they started treating uh, the Confessor, Winged Victory, and the Samaritan more like a trinity, which, um, which works out. They don't hit that point too hard. So it's sliding. Stop sliding. Look at how beautiful all these covers are. This one is super cool. It's the dark age because Astro City has eras that kind of mirror the eras of comic books. And so one of them is the dark age. And of course, what starts the dark age off is the death of the silver agent. Do you get it? Haha, <laughs> silver age. So, but actually the story of the silver agent is quite tragic and really makes you look past his cheesy, pantastic name. I had to scour to get part two when I was buying them. And the only one I could get was one that was hardcover, but look at how cool that cover is. Look at how amazing that is. This is the Dark Age part two. It was a whole giant arc. Look at that flaming horse. So cool. All of the covers are so fun. Local heroes. This one was all about the different heroes of Astro City. I love that it's like a newspaper that somebody's reading. Just Astro City is such a vivid, amazing world. Like, 
I like I could just talk about Astro City all of the time. Like that would just be my whole channel. Like, welcome back to Astro City. Here I am telling you everything. Ooh, adventure time. Come on, grab your friends. We'll go to very distant lands. Oh, Tarnished Angel. This is like a whole story about one of the villains of Astro City and how he's reformed and how he's trying to turn his life around. And it's all kind of as a gritty like film noir type thing and that's really cool. This is Confession and it's about the Confessor and the Confessor maybe like, I love the Samaritan, but the Confessor and the story of the Confessor is amazing. So Cliff notes, the Confessor comes to Astro City in like the late 1800s and he ends up being turned into a vampire. And so, but he's a priest. And so he becomes like a priest, vampire, superhero and it's as awesome as it sounds. It's really, really cool. This whole comic and just the fate of the confessor is just so fascinating. I should do this one. This one's really cool. This one is just another retelling of Superman's origins, but it's fun and I enjoy it. I mean, we all know what happened, but how did it happen? I have a couple of John Constantine comics, not as many, but I still do enjoy them something I'm kind of more getting into though. I didn't get quite as into it as some other things. When there's trouble, you know who to call. Teen Titans. I love the new Teen Titans. I think they have such an amazing arc. This is one that I've tried to collect all of, but it keeps either coming out of volumes like this and going back into omnibuses or back and forth before I can get them all. So the struggle is still very real. But the new Teen Titans, I just think, oh, there's so many great arcs in here. Also, Deathstroke, the Terminator, he did use in here. Issue dos. So what else is in here? Oh, we're nearly to the end of the box, nearly free. And this is Buffy. I was a pretty big fan of Buffy growing up. Like, it wasn't my favorite show or anything, but I enjoyed Buffy. And when I learned that it continued on in comic form, I like, it's not as beautiful on the inside as this cover, I'm sorry. <sighs> Hold on. Ugh. But they're fun. And if you liked Buffy and Angel and that kind of stuff, then, you know, this is a decent, this is a decent continuation of it. Welcome back to Casually Manga. <laughs> Trigun. Trigun is one of my favorite anime. So of course I have the um, manga as well. This is the Walking Dead Compendium Volume 1. I got this for my husband because I'm actually not a really big fan of the Walking Dead comic. I don't think it's bad. I just don't find it that enjoyable but my husband absolutely loves it. So I got this for him and the, and the second compendium. Some Lucifer in here, which I started reading after I read Sandman. I didn't enjoy it as much as Sandman though. So I kind of left it to the wayside for a bit, but then I came back to it. And finally in here, I have a graphic novel. I have a few by um, this author, Craig Thompson actually. He does really fascinating works that deal with coming of age and faith and time. This one is Christianity focused. I have another one of his that's um, Islam focused and they're just all really, really interesting. And there's very intelligent, interesting portrayals of, well, these topics. And I like graphic novels a lot. There's so much gentle storytelling, like told without much dialogue, which is something I'm also a fan of, which you know, if you've been here for a while, I'm flicking backwards through it like it's a manga but it's fine. So those were some of my comics. Some of them are piled behind me. Most are still in front of me. So what did you think? Have you read any of these? Did I give you enough information? Did you need more deets? Was this fun for you to watch? It was fun for me to do. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have so many more comics to unbox. This is just one. I have about eight more boxes. I have a problem, <laughs> but um, let me know if you're interested. That was just a snippet into the life of a comic collector. I have a lot and it's so nice to see them again. Tell me what some of your favorite comics are. Are you gonna check out any of these from my extremely vague descriptions? <laughs> let me know down below and enjoy the rest of your night, day. This is not a live stream, so that is not how it ends. It ends with please remember to do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that you never miss a video, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.